I, I, I see there was a problem. All right. Somebody had been in here messing with my stuff and my, my actual, my sound was off. Can you hear me now? Yes. No. All right. Phew. Okay. Somebody give me a comment. Can you hear me now? Still no sound. There you go. You're on. I'm on. Okay. All right. We got the sound. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, that's what I get for rushing in and doing it in two minutes, not checking things. So I apologize, guys. Well, I've been talking to myself for uh, for 15 minutes, so I apologize. So anyway, I was talking about Plein Air Salon. Today is the last day. And I was talking about uh, realism today, a uh, realism live, and that's something you want to do. Okay, so whew, my wife came in and yelled, there's no sound, there's no sound. All right, so uh, today what I'm going to do is get right to the program that I was going to do. Um, so hang out a second. Everything's kind of lagging today. I think the uh, the internet is a little bit slow again, but uh, let's let's do this. This is called creating a life of impact. Let's see if we can get this to come up. There we go. So what can you do? Uh, I, I think that you, you want to make the best out of a life. And I think what we tend to do, and I know I did this, I kind of just would go along and whatever happened, happened. And I never had a plan and I never really understood what was going on. And I just kind of let life take me. And, it, and it's kind of like being a pinball, right? You know, you, you hit the pinball. If you remember pinballs, you hit the pinball and it goes up and it bounces off something, and then it bounces somewhere else, and then there's a flipper and it bounces somewhere else, and then you end up in the gutter. And so I uh, started learning about how to make an impact in life, and uh, I want to share some of the things that I learned with you. These may or may not be helpful, uh, but we know what Socrates said, an unexamined life is not worth living. And so we want to be thinking about and examining the life. What is the meaning of life? Of course, Aristotle says it's to do and do good and to serve others, which I do agree with. Life is about moments. Don't waste them. Don't wait for them. Create them. And this is something I learned from my father, who has been very deliberate about creating memories for we as uh, those of us who are his kids and grandkids and very, being very deliberate, very specific. And so now I try to be very deliberate about creating memories for my kids. Sometimes it's vacation. Sometimes it's, you know, tomorrow we're going to go for a hike up to the top of the mountain. So this is the kind of thing that you want to do is be looking for ways to create memories and moments. Uh, when a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. And this is why we have drug issues and so on, because people need a deep sense of meaning. You need a purpose, a reason that you're living. Life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. There's always going to be storms, but it's about learning to dance in the rain. In other words, the idea is we're always going to have problems. We're always going to have challenges. What can we do to make sure that, um, that we're getting through it no matter what? And of course, this last one here, only an artist can interpret the meaning of life. I'll let you decide if that's true. So the first thing I want to talk about is, are your stories serving you? We all have stories. We have stories that were left with us uh, from our childhood, from the way that we felt that we were treated, the things that happened. You know, um, I, I have lots of friends who said, you know, all I heard about my whole life growing up is don't spend money, don't spend money, don't spend money. We're poor. And so that gets ingrained into your head. And as a result, that's kind of the way you run your life. And yet it's been proven that people who have abundance thinking, who believe that if you, uh, if you believe that you're, you're, uh, you're going to have plenty of money and you believe in abundance, <clears throat> that actually you start getting more of it. And, and you want to think about what are the stories I'm telling myself? And, and I had stories. We all have stories. And so, you know, we, we have stories like, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was abused as a child or my uh, family members had, um, you know, substance abuse issues or uh, my parents were too hard on me or my aunt and uncle did this or my brothers and sisters did that. Uh, we have these stories. You know, I, I, I told the other day about a story someone I was with who said, you know, uh, folks like us just don't do those things. And what I meant and what that person meant is that we weren't cut out to be successful. Well, everybody's cut out to be what you want to be. You have to find the way. And so you have to examine your life and ask yourself, what are the stories that I'm telling myself? And are they really true? 
Is there a way around them? It, it, you say to yourself, well, I'm not deserving because I was always told I was no good when I was growing up. Yes, you are deserving. And, and you need to find a way to find that within yourself and get rid of these stories. Because the minute you change your story, you change your life. The second thing is you want to embrace your circumstances, whatever they are. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't change your circumstances. It means you embrace them. In other words, if you had something bad happen to you, well, you want to change it. You don't want to pass that on to your kids, you, and you don't want that to stop you. But you can also look at it and say, hey, I grew up in a house that had this problem. Maybe I can use that to my advantage in growing my business, my career, my art, whatever it is. Use that as an advantage. In other words, embrace what you've got. I know people who have, have lost limbs and yet they're doing amazing things. And, and they, you know, I know other people who have really no real reason to be sitting around and saying, woe is me, but they do it all the time. So you've got to be kind of kick yourself in the butt and say, I'm going to embrace whatever it is and I'm going to not let it get in the way. Now, one of the things I wrote about in, I think, one of my Sunday coffees is the idea of having a writing your obituary. Now, why would you do that? Why would you write your obituary? Well, one of the reasons I came up with this uh, yesterday is because a friend of mine passed away yesterday. And, uh, you know, far too young, had, what's a, was a brilliant person who changed a lot of people's lives. And... I thought about, well, what happens if that's me? You know, what happens if COVID gets me? What, what have I not done in my life that I want to get done? And how do I get those things done quickly? So if you sit down and you write your obituary and you start out with, you write everything that you've done in your life to date. And then you say, okay, now before I go, now, you know, maybe you've got 50 more years, maybe you've got a hundred more years, maybe you don't have a lot of years, but the idea is what else has to get done that's going to make me feel like I lived a good, deserving life. And so start writing that in the form of obituary. So it says, you know, Eric uh, was passion so passionate about plein air painting that he started a, a television show on a major television network. He was so passionate about teaching a million people art that he used this show to bring more people to it. Uh, he was so passionate about uh, uh, making sure that plein air art and realism art were uh, getting their due recognition. So he started a museum. Those are the kinds of things. And so you want to use your dreaming of the things that you want to get done. You know, I have a book or two that I want to get done yet. And so you write those things out and then you turn them into goals and you say, okay, if, if I were to go, these are the things I want to make sure. And of course, that's a moving target because if you live Live, live longer, you stay healthy, you can do a lot more. So start with the end of your life in mind. The other thing I think that really made move the needle for me is how will I change the world? I didn't used to care about that. I used to care about myself. I used to care about making money. And now I completely flipped. And I said, you know what? I care about living a great life. I care about helping people. And I care about changing the world in my little way. So how can I change the world? And when I started thinking that way, my life was so much more fulfilling and I was actually making more progress. And so think in terms of what you can do to change the world in your way. One thing to do is to take an inventory of your life. Uh, take an inventory of every skill set that you've always had. In other words, um, you know, when you were working in high school, what were the things that you did in high school that that you learned how to do. I, I learned how to run a printing press. I learned how to do graphic design, uh, paste up. I learned how to work on a factory floor. I learned how to weld. I used to be a welder and weld cement trucks. I learned, you know, so many different things. And so you go through your whole life and you say, what are my skill sets? What have I learned from my skill sets? And then ask yourself, how can I use those skill sets to give me a little bit more advantage? So think in terms of that. I had to open the door, the air conditioner's off, it's because it's noisy, <clears throat> it's so hot in here. <clears throat> the next thing is set no limits. We tend to have, uh, the, the reason that we don't hit the success that we want is because we have a self-imposed governor. You know, a governor is what uh, keeps the car from going any faster, keeps the motor from going any faster. And so we, 
we tell ourselves these things. We tell ourselves that, you know, that isn't possible. <clears throat> Imagine somebody like Elon Musk. I mean, he's, he's talking about putting man on, the Mar on Mars. He's talking to, he, he was going to do private rocket travel. He's done that. He wanted to make the electric car a, a real thing in America. He did that. He's working on so many things. This man has no limits, but he's no different than you or me. He has doubts and he has to overcome those doubts and to think big. And so you want to make sure that you're not setting limits in your life, not telling yourself, no, I'm not capable of doing this. You are capable and you might not know how you're going to do it. You might not understand how to do it. You might have to learn something. But if you do the steps necessary, you actually can accomplish anything. I believe that comfort's your enemy. I think that, you know, we, we all get comfortable. We sit around in our lazy chairs. We watch television. Uh, we veg out. We overeat. We just do things that make us even lazier. And I think that, that uh, you know, I want to live a great life. I want every hour to be devoted to something great. And every time I waste two hours on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, I just, I regret it. Every time I waste two hours watching television, well, you know, I'll go to a movie or something that I don't really want to watch television anymore. And so I'm trying to be as productive as possible. You know, I, I get up in the morning, I go through my routine, I, which I talked about the other day. I work during the day. I try, I try to make my business as good as possible. I spend time with my family. And then I go painting, uh, you know, usually at, at night in my studio in Austin. Now I don't have a studio set up here yet. I could, and I just haven't done it yet. But the idea is, uh, don't get comfortable, make good use of your time. You know, at the end of the day, you want to go, wow, I really got a lot accomplished. That's how things get done. Also keep in mind that failure is your guide. We all have looked at failure as a bad thing. We've been bred to say failure is bad. No, none of us want to fail. None of us want to fail. I, you know, I've come close to bankrupting two different times. Uh, and, and it's ugly. It's awful. It's painful. Getting out of it is painful. But every time I went through failure, I learned so many lessons. It made me stronger, made me better. And failure is really a great tool to embrace because it will make a big difference if you embrace it. Most of us avoid risk because we want to avoid failure. And risk is progress. When you take risk, you make progress. Every time I've taken a risk in my business, I've either failed or I've made progress, but I'm not sitting still. You know, th uh, three weeks ago, I launched uh, Realism Live. We came up with it four weeks beforehand. Uh, we did it because we have no income, right? We, you know, our business is crashing because we, you know, we're in the we're in the event business, and the business was crashing. Uh, we have some income, but not a lot. And so we came up with this thing and I, you know, I was really afraid of it uh, at first. It really, it seemed like it was going to be impossible to pull off, especially in a short period of time, but we needed to do it because we didn't want to have to lay off any, any more employees. And uh, we did it and we took the risk and it could have bombed. And if it bombed, it would have cost us a huge amount of money, but uh, it didn't bomb. And as a result, it helped us a lot for this year. So look for ways to take risks. I, uh, you know, I launched Plein Air Magazine and I ran it for a couple of years and then it, it, I couldn't keep it going. So I had to close it down. I renamed it Fine Art Connoisseur and kept that going because it was broader. There was more advertiser interest. And then I brought it back. And when I brought it back, I said to my team, I said, look, we're going to launch a, a thing called the Plein Air Convention. And they're like, Eric, you know, if it fails, you're going to lose everything. I said, it won't fail. And they said, well, you know, are you really ready to lose everything? I said, no, I'm not, but it's the right thing to do. And I took the risk and it became a big deal. And thankfully, uh, but you've got to take risk to make progress. All great things start with an insecure mind. Now this is, I don't think anybody says this. This is just a me thing. And what I mean by that is the persons who envision those skyscrapers or the person who envisioned the first pyramid or the, or the Sphinx, you know, these are impossible tasks. I mean, if you, if you imagine back in the time of the, the Egyptians and the massive amount of work that it takes uh, to build something like that, just to even have the dream is a big thing. But every single person who had that dream starts out with doubt. 
I don't know if I can pull this off. It's okay to have doubt. Doubt is okay. But you have to, then when you realize you're having doubt, then you have to ask yourself, how do I get around it? How can I beat the doubt? I, you know, I'm sure that there's a skyscraper out there that somebody did for the first time. And it was a big win. It was a big hit. And so, uh, but I'm sure it was intimidating, the idea of even building something. It's just, you know, it just seems like it would be so huge. And yet every one of those people, they didn't start with complete confidence. Everybody had an insecure mind. So just know that you and me, we're like everybody else. We start out with insecurity. Greatness is not something that's born. Now, there are people who are born into wealthy families. There are people who are born into prominent families. I've heard so many stories about uh, people who, you know, you would think if somebody's born into the family of a, of a famous movie star, that they're going to have a clear path and things are going to go well for them. And sometimes it's true. I mean, you look at Will Smith's kid, uh, it's gone very well for him. But you also don't hear about the failures. You don't hear about the families who, who have kids that have, have not done anything with their lives because they have grown up with a silver spoon in their mouth and they've, you know, they've been taken care of and they, and, and, and they don't necessarily make it. I know a lot of wealthy families. I know a lot of wealthy families who have kids that have never done anything with their lives. Uh, that, you know, some of them are, you know, they don't need to because some of them are trust fund babies. I know people who were on trust funds whose trust funds ran out of money. And then they're, you know, they find themselves 40, 50 years old. They've never worked a day in their life and they don't know how to survive. So greatness isn't something that most people are born with. Greatness is something that you create within. It's something that you create within. You tell yourself that you can be great, that you can do anything, that you can accomplish anything. Imagine, you know, so I've never seen the Taj Mahal in person, but I'm sure it's huge. But imagine dreaming of that. I think that was a gift for, uh, in memory of this man's wife, or maybe it was a wedding gift. But the idea is imagining it and then figuring out how to get it done, uh, especially in those days, but even now today. Um, roadblocks happen all the time for us. Roadblocks, uh, you know, I, I can remember a time when I was, my, I had a partner, uh, we were starting a business, we were moving forward, and then we got this massive roadblock. And it was like, oh man, and, and we could not figure out a way around it. And, and so we just gave up and that business never took off. And then, then we ended our, uh, our friendship and our, not our friendship, but our, our, our uh, partnership. And then I, I kept thinking, you know, there's got to be a way, there's got to be a way. So I went back to it and I just kept trying different things. And eventually, uh, I got around the roadblock. You know, a way to get around a roadblock is to go through it, to dig out, dig it out of the way, to go under it, to go over it, go around it, you know, go around the world, the opposite direction, you know, whatever it is. But it, what it does is it forces you to be creative. And if you take thinking time with every problem and you say with every problem, I'm not stopping until I come up with a hundred solutions. Don't judge them. Just write out a hundred solutions. The first five or six come easily. It's the other 95 that come difficult, but those are where the good solutions lie. So embrace roadblocks. They will help you. And don't let fear get in your way. Uh, we all have fear. I have fear. Uh, there are things that I fear. There are people that I fear sometimes. It doesn't seem like I would. Uh, I actually went to someone who helped me overcome my fear. I, I went to a Tony Robbins thing. And I met with a Tony Robbins specialist. And I said, look, I have all this confidence, but there's a certain group of people when I'm around those particular people, I feel like a three-year-old kid. I don't feel deserving. And so she taught me a way around that. In 15 minutes, we solved the problem forever. I didn't think it was something I was ever going to solve, but there are people who can help you. Don't try to do everything yourself and don't let fear get in the way. Um, also remember that Every big project starts out with small steps. And the first step is the one that takes the most courage. And by the way, it, the first step might just be, I'm going to write out a business plan or I'm going to figure out, you know, how, you know, what this looks like. And then the second step is I'm going to write a business plan. The third step is, you know, whatever. But the first step is the hardest. But if you take the first step, that's all you have to take. You just break things down into little tiny bite-sized pieces and then take that step. And when you get that step done, then take the next step. And next thing you know, you will accomplish great things. 
remember that the outcome is always worth the pain. I have had so much pain in my life. And sometimes when I didn't think I was going to get through it, sometimes I was so hurt, you know, I would be in a fetal position for weeks. You know, we all go through this. Uh, I've gone through it. You know, things have never been perfect for me. Uh, I, I tend to learn slower than other people. And, and so, uh, but the pain is always tough, but you just keep going. You just, you suck it up and you get through it. And the outcome always makes it sweeter. Success is sweeter when there's pain. Now, the other thing that I think is really important is to dream and to dream in detail. And when I say dream in detail, I, I, um, I went to a seminar one time, Lee Miltier gave it. And she said to me, what you want to do is think in terms of detail of, you know, like if you're going to a meeting, I want you to rehearse that meeting uh, on the, in the car on the way there. Rehearse how it goes. Rehearse what you're going to say. Rehearse what they're going to say. Think about it in detail. And I realized that's what I've been doing my whole life is that I, when I come up with an idea, I don't just come up with the idea. I, I know what color it's going to be. I know what it's going to look like. I know how it's going to work. I know what the manual says. I, you know, everything that I dream of, I come up with detail. And I realized it's that thinking about that detail constantly when, you know, there's a, a process that occurs when uh, we're trying to get acclimated to, to something. You'll see this in the media. The media will try to get us acclimated to something, something that might be considered oh, you know, taboo or something. So they'll dribble out little things a little bit at a time about that taboo subject. They'll create a show about that taboo subject. And next thing you know, everybody's like accepting of it. Well, the same thing happens when you're dreaming. And you dream about something, the first few times you dream of it, you might be telling yourself it's not possible. But the more you think about it being possible, the more you start realizing, yeah, I think maybe I could do that. Maybe I can get there. Maybe I can get to the next level. And so if you dream in detail, all of a sudden these things will happen and it'll, it'll happen. You'll, you'll make it happen. Um, negative self-talk, your downfall, right? And we all have that. I have it. Um, I have it sometimes worse than other times. And uh, I learned a little trick from my dad, which is just, that's not like me. I shouldn't be thinking that. And I push it out of my head. Uh, because you don't want to absorb it when you're having negativity. Don't absorb negativity. We all have natural uh, tendencies to be negative, and yet we've got to push the negatives out because if we thrive on, uh, or we sit around and we focus on the negatives, we'll make ourselves sick. We'll tell ourselves what's not possible. You know, you'll tell yourself you can't do it. And the reality is, if you tell yourself you can do it, you really can. I didn't used to believe that, but I believe it now because I've been able to do it. <clears throat> Success is about belief, <clears throat> excuse me. Success is about belief, about vision. You want to have belief in your, in, your, in your idea. You want to have a big vision. And then once you get a big vision, then you want to turn it into clear goals. I've done, if you go back on YouTube and you look at the past broadcasts, I've done things on goal setting. And then goals without action are just dreams, right? But goals with action actually create things. Uh, so you, you need to have resolve. You have to say, you know, I'm going to do this no matter what. I, uh, I approached somebody about this TV show, oh, probably three years ago, two or three years ago. And every possible roadblock that could come up has come up. And I just kept saying, you know, I'm going to do this. It needs to be done. I'm going to find a way. I didn't have the money to put up the money myself because it's close to six, eight hundred thousand dollars to do it. And so I just started talking about it. And, and I had, you know, one couple came to me and they said, we want to put the first first hundred and twenty thousand dollars in. I was like, yes. And I'm 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 not there yet. I haven't raised it. You know, I'm looking for somebody who's affiliated with a museum that wants a lot of publicity or somebody who wants to help the plein air world, who has the, the money and that money's not gonna hurt them, and they can be an executive producer. And I know that I will accomplish it. I don't know how long it'll take. It doesn't matter how long it takes. What matters is that it gets done because it's important because it'll change lives. So you have to have resolve. So you've got, these are the pieces. You got to have belief. You got to have vision. You got to have clear goals. You got to have action and you've got to be resolved that you're going to do it no matter what. You're not going to give up. And I have had many times where I wanted to give up and I just said, you know what, I'm going to keep going, keep going. And it was tough, 
but I plowed through and things got done. So your mindset determines the outcome of a life well lived. You've got to believe that there's a superhero in you. Mindset is your own responsibility, though. You cannot say, you can't make anything anybody else's problem. You can't wait for the perfect conditions. You can't say, well, when this happens, I'll do it. Or when that happens, I'll do it. But the, I, I'll tell you a story about a, a person I know. I can't mention names. This person, um, this person really, really, really smart. Really, really smart. Really great personality. Really fun to be around. And, but working at a really, really crummy job that she hated, uh, wasn't making any money. And I, and, and I said, you know, I have an idea for a job that you could do. And I explained what the job was. And I said, and I, I'd be willing to make an introduction to somebody for you to get this job because I know you're going to crush it. I know you're going to do it. And she's like, yeah, I'd like to do that. And I said, okay, well, I'll make the introduction. She said, oh, no, not yet. I said, why not? She said, well, I need to lose some weight first uh, because I, I feel overweight. I don't have the confidence. I said, okay, but you know, you don't have to have, you don't have to be thin to do this job. And then, you know, it was, well, I, you know, I need to, I need to study a little bit more. I need to learn more about it. it was, and, and I finally said, look, the reason you're saying these things is because you fear them. You, you need to just take responsibility and say, you know what, I'm going to hold my breath. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to take that first meeting. It's that first step that we talked about. Mindset is your own responsibility. It's not the responsibility of your wife or your husband or your kids or your grandkids or anyone else. As a matter of fact, sometimes those people hurt your mindset because you need to surround yourself with positive people. I happen to be around some very positive people, thankfully. So mindset is everything. Remember that there's a superhero inside of you. It's living inside, waiting to be released, and you can do anything. I'm convinced. I have worked with people. I got a call from a guy or an email from a guy and I sat down. I had this conversation with him 30 years ago and I didn't even remember his name. And uh, I got this email from this guy. He says, do you remember me? You sat down with me one night at your house and you gave me some advice. And I said, no, honestly, I don't. And he reminded me a little bit more. And then I thought, oh yeah, I remember now. He says, I, uh, he says, I was a DJ at your radio station. He says, today I'm a multimillionaire. He said, the reason I'm a multimillionaire is that you convinced me that I could do it. And you gave me some steps and you told me kind of how to do it. And once I started believing it, I went for it and I did it. And I thought, well, you know, you don't ever know if you tell people things, uh, whether or not it's going to work. But there is a superhero in every person. There's no condition that you can't overcome. You may have a health issue. You may have a, a, a dire health issue, but that doesn't mean you have to stop living. I know people who have terrible, terrible health issues who are still going to get that book done, you know, because they want to get that book done before they go. And so you've got to ask yourself, is there a way? Can I be that superhero? And the answer is yes, you can be if you're willing to go through the pain, the risk, and those things. And remember, comfort is the enemy. So Find that superhero within you. And if you know somebody who needs to hear these words, pass it on. Because my goal in life is to help people. That's what I get out of this is that, you know, I don't really look forward to being here every day, uh, seven days a week, all the time. I do some days, but there are some days like this morning, I had to rush into town, get my meeting done, rush back. Uh, and days like that, it'd be nice to, you know, stop and have a latte and, you know, just have a little fun. And, but, but I want to be here because I'm driven to help you. And if I can help you in some little way, and if you can help somebody else, anytime you see something, you think if there's one kernel in there, one idea, Charlie Hunter was talking about that. He had a kernel for an idea in his, in his uh, new painting video. If there's one kernel in there, a little truth that sometimes that little truth will slip a wedge into somebody's brain and open it up, then you need to share it with them. All right. So anyway, that's what I got for you today. And I hope this has been helpful. It is like 150 degrees in here. It's really hot today. I've got, I got a couple of air conditioners that I'm going to turn on when they, uh, they're noisy. I can't do it uh, when we're going. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Remember today at 3 p.m. Michelle Byrne and she's got a video 
at Streamline Art Video on YouTube or Facebook. Streamline Art Video, and it's on uh, painting impressionistic figures. Remember that tomorrow I'm giving away an easel brush clip and a plein air apron for your comments. And I hope this is helpful. Linda Pica. Oh, Linda Pica. I wish I could tell her story because maybe if Linda, contact me. And if you're willing to tell your story, I'll put you on the show someday. Uh, I can't tell you her story because it's very private. Uh, but talk about overcoming the impossible. This is a woman who overcame the impossible. That's all I can say. So Linda, reach out to me personally, and I'll put you on if you want to do it. I don't want to embarrass you. But uh, anyway, you guys, thank you for watching today. Uh, have a really terrific day. Remember that uh, your mindset controls everything. And if your mindset is being um, dirtied up, if your filter is dirty, it's your filter's dirty because what you're watching, what you're consuming, what you're believing, what you're, you know, there's just a lot of bad stuff out there going on right now. And you can't ignore it. You can't put your head in the sand, but you can deal with it by keeping yourself positive, keep yourself upbeat, make sure that you're focusing on what is going to make you feel good about yourself. Because, you know, a lot of people are just sitting around doom scrolling and then they're like, oh, I feel awful. I don't want to do anything. I just don't feel motivated. Somebody told me that the other day. They said, you know, I, I just have felt awful since COVID, so I'm not painting. I'm not doing what I love to do. And I thought, they're winning, whoever they are, whatever it is, they're winning. And don't let anybody control you. You have control of you. You control what you can control. And you can control your outlook, your filter, your attitude, how you feel about things. And so make sure that you um, control that. Now, I want to tell you something uh, that I'm going to write about something about that this week. Uh, I Sometimes I, I make notes to myself. You know, I'm always looking for ideas. And, and so uh, I have a thing called Sunday Coffee, coffeewitheric.com. And uh, I do it every week on Sunday mornings. I sit out on the dock or the backyard or the porch or wherever I happen to be. And I write it for you guys. And it's not necessarily about art. It's just about life. It's about philosophy. It's about mindset. It's about a lot of different things. And so I'll be talking about uh, how you can take this to the next level on Sunday and just get it at coffeewitheric.com. Just go there and hit the subscribe button. It's free. I think, um, I don't really know the numbers, but I was told we're up to a quarter million. So it may be more, it may be less. I'd, I'd like to have, you know, I'd like to have a quarter million. That'd be cool. I'd like to have a million. And the way that happens is when you forward it, you find other people. And I keep hearing from people who said, you know, my son, my daughter, my grandma, you know, somebody sent this to me. So that's really cool when you guys do that. Uh, remember that we've got Realism Live and you want to get registered for that. It's coming up in October, but get your seats now. Uh, we have a big faculty that's about to be announced. We're just waiting for final confirmations, but we have Daniel Sprick. Uh, we have Joshua LaRock. We have Rose Franson. We have Graydon Parrish. And I don't have a picture here. We have Juliet Aristides. Um, I've lost that picture. I'm sorry, Juliet. Anyway, uh, these are remarkable people that can teach you remarkable things. And remember, we're talking about all subjects. And so we're going to be doing uh, figure painting. Uh, you can have tight figure painting and loose figure painting. Lots of different ways to do figure painting and storytelling. We're going to do portraiture. We're going to do still life. Uh, lots of different styles of portraiture. We're going to do landscapes. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, flowers. We're going to do a lot of different subjects. So join us for Realism Live at realismlive.com. And uh, remember to leave a comment so you can win the apron or the easel brush clip. So I'm out of here. Thank you for your tolerance today. And uh, I hope that uh, the internet continues to work for me. It's, it was kind of tough yesterday. Have a great day and, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.